Hi, I'm Misty Velasky, and you're watching Ojai Valley News In-Depth. Joining us today is one of Ojai's heroes, the second all-time winningest football coach in Ventura County history with 171 wins, Cliff Farrar. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I've been trying to Looking track you forward for a while. To <laughs> so uh, you are back in Ojai after being in Buena for a few years, from 2008 to 2011. So, Four seasons. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. So uh, tell us, why did you leave and why did you come back? Well, I've always enjoyed um, being involved with football programs that um, are struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was an assistant, I went with uh, several head coaches to schools that uh, were struggling, and we built the programs up. And um, so, you know, once we got things turned around at Nordoff and things were going along well, my wife and I, Roxanne and I, had talked about it several times about going and looking for another job that would allow me to, you know, take over a program that was struggling and see if we can't build it back up. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it several years back, and then our daughter Danielle told us that uh, we were going to be grandparents, so that put the Knicks on leaving the area. <laughs> and so then the Buena job came open, and um, it seemed like the what I was looking for, and I could do both. I could go and try something, build a program that's been hurt, you know, having a little bit of trouble, and then um, stay in Ojai and be around my family. So it sort of was two things at once and it met both criteria and it made it an, an easy transition. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to come back this year. Why was that? Because you retired in 2011. Actually, I retired five years ago <laughs> and I've been um, teaching part-time and coaching. Uh, in our retirement system, you're only allowed to teach so many classes back in public education. Mm. And so that's what I was doing. I was teaching two classes and being head football coach. That was what I did my last year at Nordoff. And then that's what I did all four years at Buena. Mm -hmm. And um, it just got to be a point where, you know, being a head football coach, I'd been that for 25 years. And um, so it was this sort of time to step back and see what some of the other options were. And, and so I did, and uh, Tony was Henning, the head football coach, was real gracious. You know, he's he played for me, and mm -hmm. like one of the family, uh, he's the age of my right in the age of my two sons. He practically grew up in our house, and so uh, you know he came with my son Russell and talked to me about coming back to the staff and convince you, convince me to uh, <laughs> do that. And uh, so yeah, it's, I'm looking forward to. It. We're having a lot of fun right now. Yeah, so what's it like working with, you I mean, you have so many former players on your sidelines. Um, Tony Henney and your son and uh, a whole bunch of other guys, bronze shoe awards from mm -hmm. here to Kingdom Come. So what's it like working with all these guys? Well, my, uh, after our first uh, coaches meeting when I got home, Roxanne said, well, how could you handle being an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, well, that's pretty easy. I look around the room and I think there was 17 or 18 of us and out of that many there was only, I think there's, I think there's three guys on, I don't know, I think there's two guys on staff that either haven't coached with me or played for me. Wow. So, and then, of course, my son, Russell. And so it really makes it pretty easy, mm -hmm. and we're just having a real good time. I think the kids wonder sometimes who's having more fun, us or them. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we take a break, and, you know, we get together, and we're just laughing and telling stories and just having a good time. And so I think sometimes you glance at them, they look over like, what the heck are they doing over there? You know, so. <laughs> We're having a real good time, and um, you know, like I said, I really appreciate Tony uh, opening the door for me to come back and, and be involved, and so uh, it's allowed my family to get back into Ranger football. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my son Russell's there. Obviously, Roxanne is at Nordoff High School as a secretary, and then she handles some of the football stuff. And my son Brian and daughter-in-law Leah are uh, on the on the Gridiron Club board, and my daughter and, and Jeff. My son-in-law are involved. Jeff does the taping of the game. So it's a family affair again. I'll say. <laughs> so here's a tough one for you. Top five Rangers of all time. Oh, that's real tough. <laughs> that's real tough because, you know, uh, 21 years you run across a lot of really good players. Mm -hmm. And not only that, just players, but just fine young men. Um, I, I think probably the number one player in my mind would be Josh Hawkins. Yep. Um, you know, he just did so many things for us. Um, and really carried uh, offensively was really a very good player, obviously, in, in from 91, 92, and then 94, held the county record for a while mm -hmm. as the top rusher in the county. And I think probably if you glance at his uh, four games in the playoffs, I don't know if you could find a much more dominant 
uh, player. If I remember right, he, you know, we played in four games. He had like 825 yards rushing, 12 touchdowns. So, I mean, he was just, he's outstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, his brother, uh, Jesse, was, you know, had the school record for most yards rushing in a game, and he was outstanding. My son, Russell, is the only uh, football player at Nordoff High School to be on the CIF team for three years. Um, so Russ has to be in there. Um, ben Churchill was a linebacker, guard, you name it, Ben played. And, uh, so Ben also wrote our song, our Ranger song. Oh, nice. So, and, uh, so that's, that's a few. Um, Steve Somm comes to mind. Was an outstanding quarterback for us. Led that led that team. Um, uh, just there's a lot of them. Uh, and you know what's funny right now is I got a couple of freshman kids that I'm helping coach in the mornings, and uh, their dads played for me. And so I get after them. Yeah, you better live up to your dad's reputation. So, because a couple <laughs> no of their, yeah, a couple of their dads were very good football players. So uh, I put a little pressure on them about working there harder. You go. So, uh, memorable moments. This can be good or bad. What are your most uh, Nordoff, uh, most memorable Nordoff moments? One is when we turned, uh, at the, uh, in 1990, uh, when we played Santa Clara, or I think it was the last game of the season, maybe it was the next to the last game, I forget. But after the game, we had a, a bench-clearing brawl, and it was just ugly. Mm. And, um, but what it showed uh, at that point was that the kids finally started caring. Mm-hmm. Because for a while, you know, Ranger football was sort of in the in last place all the time. I mean, you look at it, uh, Jim Parker ran an article at the end of the 80s uh, about the best football programs in Ventura County. And then he listed all of the football programs in Ventura County, and Nordoff was listed last for wins in the 80s. Ooh. So uh, Dan Music was on the staff at the time, and Dan and I just looked at each other and said, hey, our goal is to, in the 90s to be in the top half of, of this now. So when he writes the article at the end of the 90s, we'll be in the top half. And so I think we met that goal. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that. And um, so that, that game, I think, just showed the players that, hey, maybe they bought in and they really, mm-hmm. really started caring. And then the next season in 91, uh, that football team um, has a lot of fond memories because of uh, – they're the first group that came in, and after 25 years, we won the league championship. And so they, they're really good. Uh, um, so that was really cool. Um, Josh Hawkins' opening game as a senior was, he scored four touchdowns in the first <laughs> half, and by every means possible. He ran the opening kickoff back for 90 yards for a touchdown. So Josh, if I remember correctly, in his career as a senior, he, the first time he touched the ball as a senior, he ran for a touchdown. And the last time he touched the ball as a senior, he ran for a touchdown. Oh. So those were pretty cool. Um, Jesse rushing for 305 yards, I think it was, against um, Cathedral. Yeah. Was, was an outstanding. And that's a fond memory because um, I'd gotten a letter from somebody in the mail. And sometimes as coaches, you wonder who they come from. But I'd gotten a letter from a Cathedral fan that said, Coach, you've got to move this game from your facility because you're not able to hold the crowd that we're going to have because our quarterback's going to break the national record <laughs> for touchdown passes. And he was in the running to do that. So I showed that to the players. And then uh, we ended up upsetting them 41-27. So that was a great night there, too. And uh, then, obviously, the 94 team getting into CIF finals for the first, first time mm-hmm. was outstanding. Um, so those are things that just, you know, and then, the, you know, a lot of times you don't, those are games, but the other things that are memorable are just the, uh, the, uh, the young men that, trans, you know, that transfer from being um, boys into young men. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. Uh, Zach Tain uh, was a football player in our program. That was, he's, a, he's a brainiac. And uh, the coaching staff came to me and said, "We need." as a freshman, said, Coach, we need to cut him. He's going to get hurt. And I just said, because Zach wore big old thick glasses, and he was, you know, he's, just, he's an intelligent, very intelligent young man. I said, no, we never cut a, we never cut a freshman. We'll figure something out. And uh, then as a sophomore, they came and said, Coach, we need to cut Zach again. I said, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and then as a senior, he ends up being all league. 
So I mean, those are the type of moments that just uh, they tug at your heart. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we have a pretty good sideline this year, you'd say. Uh, what's the... <laughs> <laughs> what's Few the years outlook? of experience there. Right? Yeah. I can't even think of how many, probably over 100. Um, what is the outlook for uh, the team this year? I've heard some really good things for these guys. It's a, it's a really fine group of athletes, you know, and um, this would be obviously my 22nd year at Nordhoff, and probably just as a total group, there's a lot of athletes um, involved. Um, we're able almost to go one way, and, and I think there was one or two teams that we had where we played 20 kids, so there was a couple kids going both ways, and I think this year will be one of those again, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin Walcott, and it's uh, going to have to go both ways for us quite a bit. Um, Cody McMillan's going to have to play at some defense at times, and um, Brian Wadsworth might have to go over and play a little offense once in a while. And then Brad Sloan is starting both ways. So those guys are going to have to to do that. But otherwise than that, it's it's a very pretty good group of people. I think sometimes what happens to us is we get such high expectations. Nordoff football mm -hmm. has always had high expectations once the 91 team started winning and the mm -hmm. 92 team and so forth, that sometimes uh, we get our expectations way up, which we like. We want to shoot for the moon. But I think there, uh, Tony has the... He's held the tradition of our non-league being a very competitive non-league schedule, mm -hmm. and I think fans have to realize that we have some teams on this, on this game, on the schedule that can play with just about anybody in the county. So, for us to think we're going to go undefeated, um, is a nice goal, but I think we have to be realistic. And I, I think if we finish eight and two in the regular season, I think we've had a real good regular season. Um, not that I don't think we can win them all. But I'm also trying to be a little realistic about where we're going. Sure. So a uh, home game coming up first, August 31st against Pacifica. That's going to be a big one. Always. Whenever you face Donnie Ray's teams, they're always well coached. <laughs> and you better be ready to play. I guess that was a barn burner last year, what, 60 to 56 or something like that. So um, as defensive coordinator, hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's uh, – uh, we've been playing against Donnie. I've been playing as a head coach against Donnie for a lot of years, and he does a real good job. So they'll be well coached, and it's going to be a good football game. I think we'll have a, a great crowd out, oh, as yeah. usual. You know, the stands will be full, and Optimus will be selling their famous tri-tip sandwiches. Oh, can't and, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was at uh, out to dinner one night, and one of the players, one of my ex-players stopped me and talked to me, and I said, you're coming up? He says, shoot, I wouldn't miss Ranger football and the tri-tip sandwiches for nothing. <laughs> so, Cliff, thank you so much for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And come out and support Ranger football. Yep. August 31st against Pacifica over there at Ojai Valley Community Stadium, 7 o'clock. I'm Misty Velasky. This is Cliff Farrar. This has been Ojai Valley News In-Depth.